Hello friends, as you prepare for your practical exams in medicine, I thought it might be a good idea to share some tips for you to do even better than you are otherwise planning to do. So here are my 10 tips for a better and more successful practical examination. So four areas I will cover. I will talk about some general tips, some tips on your appearance, some on your presentation, and then finally a little bit about the content of the medicine examination. So here goes. Four tips of general advice. Be punctual. Don't be late. No teacher likes a student coming late to class and examination is just like another class. So don't be late for the exam. Reach the ward on time. Coming on to tip number two. Start confidently. There is no reason why you should be fumbling, stammering, stumbling or speaking in an inaudible mumble at the beginning of your presentation. Your confidence is extremely important. Be loud, be clear, be confident. But please remember, overconfidence can be dangerous in an exam. So don't be caught on a wrong foot. Avoid talking, sneaking, peeking, asking, or referring to a friend in between the exam and get, don't get caught on the wrong foot. So simple. So tip number four, stop and think after each step. So after you've taken your uh, chief complaints, stop, look at the history, think. After you've taken your presenting complaints or presenting details or presenting history, stop, think what are the possibilities. After you've completed your history, stop again, think what are the possibilities. After you've completed your general examination, stop again, think. After you've completed your examination, see whether everything is fitting together. If it's not fitting together, Think again, change, tweak, modify, but be careful in what you present. So coming on to your appearance. Now here are my four tips on appearance. So I've often seen that people will come with a, a, a shabby slip of paper, which is folded, kept into your pockets, and which has got a shabbily written roll number. So be confident and have a proper badge, which displays your roll number neatly and clearly. If you have a bad handwriting, it's best to print it out and so that it is displayed well and the examiner doesn't need to ask you again and again, what was your roll number? Tip number six, please dress formally, polish your shoes and tuck your shirt in neatly. Everyone likes a neat and presentable student. Tip number seven, if you're a guy, then please do shave on the same morning of your exams. Don't come to the exam with a stubble of two days or three days, which is very unpleased, unpleasant to look at. Tip number eight. Most of the guys do decide to wear a necktie. And if you also decide to wear a necktie, then there are certain rules of wearing a necktie. If you're wearing a necktie, close the collar button of your shirt. So this is the collar button and it should be closed if you're wearing a tie. Often seen guys will have a hanging tie with a collar button open. That doesn't make sense. Choose the color of your necktie carefully. It shows how much care you've taken for yourself. And then the knot of the tie is important. It defines you. Most of the people will have a Windsor knot. So Windsor knot is something which looks like this, may not be visible in this video, but that's the most universally accepted knot that people will tie. Then there is the Trinity knot. And there is the Eldridge knot. So choose your knot carefully. It defines you. Please remember that a practical exam is not a test of your knowledge. It is a display of your presence of mind and your presentation skills. It is a way of effectively being able to sell yourself. My tip number nine. Be prepared with a summary of your case. So a summary is important and most of the time, most of you will be asked for a summary. Your summary should quickly include in five to eight lines, the name, age and sex of the patient, the chief complaints of presentation in chronological order, the key positive and negative findings in history and examination should include histories like diabetes, hypertension, the smoking and alcohol use with each quantified appropriately in pack years or whether the alcohol has been used, abused or the person is dependent on alcohol. 
and then your diagnosis that you are considering for the person and the patient. So it should be included in five to eight lines at the most. Then your complete diagnosis. Now, this is my last tip, but there is an often misconception among the students. But please do remember that it is not important to get it right, the diagnosis. But please be complete as far as you can. Include the pathology, the etiology, and the functional status in the diagnosis. You'll get the pathology from your examination findings. You'll get etiology most of the time from your history, and you should be able to identify the functional status of the individual. So these were my 10 tips for your exam. And now let's talk a little bit about content. So when you are preparing, please remember that these are some of the most common cases that you will find in the medicine ward, and you should be well prepared with these cases. You should be ready with stroke, COPD, cirrhosis and portal hypertension, diabetes, hypertension, anemia, mitral stenosis. These are very common and more often than not you will get one of these cases. Among the ECGs it is easy or likely that you will pick up some atrial fibrillation or an acute myocardial infarction as an undergraduate student. Among the x-rays you should be prepared with pleural effusion, pneumonia, pneumothorax and hydropneumothorax at least in the instruments, I've often seen students getting confused between spinal needle and the bone marrow needle. Please make sure that you can identify these two differently and independently. You might often get the Ambu bag, which is all, also the most common instrument that I have seen people handing out. Among the drugs, insulin and atropine are some things that you can't miss. So now this list is not the entire list and you might be asked questions outside of this. But it's quite a chance uh, that you will get something from this list. So these are my tips on uh, the examination and wish you best of luck. And may you do great, superb and come out in flying colors. See you soon. Wish you all the best. Thank you.